Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the eDiscovery channel. This is Tom O'Connor at Thundery, Lightning, a whole bunch of rain that we really need here in downtown uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. Rocky uh, Messing, as always, my partner in mayhem here with uh, with me from uh, your in country in Baltimore, right? Charm in City. Country. Yep, Charm City, Maryland. There we go. My old stomping grounds. I like it. Uh, and we are very, very happy to be joined today by a old friend and comrade in arms, Peter Pepitone, who's the e-discovery director at Dinsmore in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, the city I love only because the Cincinnati airport is actually across the river in Kentucky. Is that still the case, Peter? It is still the case, yes. We have a municipal airport uh, in the city, but uh, the, the main uh, international airport is across the river. Yeah, I, I love that. First time I flew in there. We'll be landing in Kentucky in 10 minutes. I'm going, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was going to Ohio. Did I get on the wrong plane? Yeah. Here? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's yeah. okay. It's just like uh, the, the D.C. airport is not in D.C. Or the well, airport yeah, airport that's, by Kenner. you know, that's yeah. understandable. I mean, where would they put it on the National Mall, you know? <laughs> they got a little, little real estate problem there. Yeah, the so, fact that it is so close to DC is actually impressive. So yeah, yeah. So closer to, it's closer to DC than the place where they're doing ILTA, which they say is in DC, which really isn't, right? Right. So, in any event, oh. all good. Uh, but I, I, I digress. Peter, as, welcome. As you do. Yeah, Peter. Now, Peter asked, asked earlier what the tone of this was going to be, and I think we've just established. Uh, what our tone is going to be for the next 45 minutes or so. Yeah. So, Peter, tell her we try to we try to make this, you know, informal and sort of a introduction to folks. We started this during COVID when um, nobody was seeing anybody in person anymore. So we'd like to, you know, let people who maybe haven't had the pleasure of meeting you learn a little bit. Tell us a little bit about how you got into this wacky business of ours. Well, um, I guess it was through hopping, right? I, uh, I was down, uh, I, I grew up in Louisiana. I was at LSU. I got a, uh, I majored in accounting. So that was my undergrad degree. Went straight into law school from there. Um, Did you always and, know you wanted to, to go to law school? Or, I mean, was that like a path that you thought you were going to take or what happened? Um, yeah, what so, happened? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't really know, right? Um, I, I started into accounting with the notion of becoming a tax lawyer. Okay. Um, so that was that was sort of an early on uh, thought. Uh, other people probably knew I wanted to be a lawyer before I did. Um, I believe hmm. I was either three or four when my grandparents started calling me the lawyer. Mini lawyer, uh, right? Argumented yeah. on every. I was going to say, uh, yeah. <laughs> just about. Well, well uh, you didn't say uh, brush my hair. You just right. said uh, you know, take care of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fix that up was, that was way back when there was lots of it to be had. <laughs> <laughs> where um, where did you grow up in Louisiana? So I grew up in New Orleans. Uh, oh, or right. technically in Gretna. All uh, right. But I, 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 I prepped in the city at, uh, at Holy Cross. All right. Um, same high school that uh, Fats Domino went to. As a matter of fact, Fats lived around the corner. Nice. Wow. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Probably so our number one claim to fame. Yeah. <laughs> You're, uh, so, so you kind of always had that argumentative streak and, and, uh, you know, and overanalyzing everything that everyone said. And so tax attorney, that, that would, that's an interesting one to, to kind of choose. That lasted, that lasted one project at my very first, uh, summer gig, uh, at McGlinchey in New Orleans. Uh, I said, oh, yeah. oh, I'm interested in tax. Give me a tax assignment. They gave me one. And I was like, Ugh. Okay. No, thank you. <laughs> what else yeah. is on the list? Right? That's kind of, yeah. I, I, yeah. I actually took a couple of my actuary exams and I did a, a summer oh. internship uh, with an actuarial firm. And I, I realized very quickly that, yeah, as, as someone who analyzed statistics and life expectancy, my life expectancy was going to be very short if I continued to be an actuary. Right. So wow. it's good to learn yeah. these things early. Yeah. You guys are killing me. I got audited once. <laughs> that's it that's it that's all, that's what you that's got. all i got in that arena <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm surprised that more actuaries don't come from here just because of our presence to the bourbon industry <laughs> yep there you go i hear it <laughs> presence i'm in proximity anyway sorry yeah. hard we, to keep one's thoughts straight when you're looking at uh you two gorgeous dudes i'm telling you it's a common problem yeah 
So seven years sure straight at, uh, at LSU and you escaped yeah. with your life. Um, that's right. Yeah. And sanity somewhat intact. I mean, he was an attorney, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Uh, I'll, I'll plead the, I'll plead the fifth. <laughs> any, uh, any good football while you were there? I mean, any, any championship level, any great players, anybody, anything worth noting? So there were, there were a lot of good players that came through, uh, through a lot sure. of different eras. We didn't, we didn't win. Um, and now you're going to tax my memory. Certainly no national titles. I believe we won an sec championship or two in the early years, good. uh, when Art Barker was still the coach. Oh yeah. Um, okay. And then, uh, then Archer took over. Um, we, we had a lot of, we had a lot of good teams. We had a lot of good players came through. Uh, I think I missed two home games in the, uh, in the seven years, including the earthquake game where, uh, Tommy <laughs> Hodson threw that ball to, uh, uh, to Eddie Fuller in the, uh, in the end zone. And it, uh, the cheer was so loud that it recorded on the seismograph. Correct. Registered uh, on the Richter the, uh, scale. Yep. Of the, of the geology yep. department. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the, they recently recorded uh, uh, another event in Tiger Stadium that that reached the uh, the seismograph yeah, enough to uh, to record something, and that was the uh, the Garth Brooks concert in Baton Rouge. Oh, <laughs> there you when go. He started yeah. playing Colin Baton Rouge. It, it registered as an earthquake of, of right. a small size. Cool. Yeah. And 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 so now here's a little. It's not really trivia test, but really, can you name all the teams in the SEC now? Do we have enough time for that? Holy cow! <laughs> oh, so yeah, I can do it, and then you gotta you gotta put like Oklahoma and Texas as a yeah, you know, right. you know, whatever they're gonna come in. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. One of the SEC yeah. teams uh, just won the College World Series, so that's good. Yeah, um, yeah, I saw that. Was, Notre, was, my team, Notre Dame, made it to the Grade Eight, so that was a that was a big deal for us. We upset Tennessee on the way there, so um, that was an achievement. <laughs> no, really, doing that by the way. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Um, so, so there you are, you're doing your first project. You realize, nope, that's, that's not what's going to happen. Right. 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 So, and, and kind of, were you at a loss or you kind of had some direction? Was there a mentor? Like what, what was going on there? So no, not really. Uh, from then on, it was just, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do whatever. I'll, yeah. I'll try different projects. I'll, I'll see what, what seems interesting and, and really litigating seemed more interesting than anything else. Okay. So, um, after law school, I went to an insurance defense firm, a uh, small firm down in, uh, in New Orleans, um, and then moved to a different firm, wound up doing both plaintiff and defense side uh, casualty work, um, and got a little, um, I don't know, a little bored, I suppose, by it. Uh, it was just a matter of, look, I'm going to try to move money from pile A into pile B, or I'm going to try to keep it in the first pile. And it didn't, it didn't it seem all be. that interesting, yeah, or, yeah. or exciting. Um, so I wound up uh, working for a firm that sent me to, uh, to Cincinnati for a short period of time to work, uh, seconded to the uh, plaintiff steering committee for the breast implant litigation. Huh? The document depository was here and they needed a yeah. bunch of lawyers to go through all the documents. So I was one of the, the team, uh, I don't know, there were 40 or 50 of us maybe, including about 30 from New Orleans, uh, okay. the New Orleans lawyers. <laughs> uh, and, and, we were a minor force uh, on, on the litigation field, but, but here in Cincinnati, uh, probably an outsized uh, social force, uh, just because we, we went everywhere together and all you know did whatever. And, and, and the question would be, oh, are those, are those New Orleans lawyers coming to this thing? Right, you're bringing the Louisiana <laughs> spirit back up, up north, that kind of thing? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the music, the dancing, the food as well. Yeah, all, yeah. all of those things. Nice, nice. Yeah. And and at this point, were you into technology at all? Like, uh, was that only later? Kind of where where'd that fit into into your career? So that was the first uh, time that we used a document database. Mm -hmm. um, the first time that I had. Uh, I, I'm sure others had used it before, but we used uh, this this little program uh, called Summation. Um, yep, I've and heard of we it. Would yeah, we would hand code the the documents for why we thought they were of value or whether we thought they were of value, and then there was a team of data entry folks that would go and you know in the nights put all that into summation. Um, and after a period of time, we needed to start using the the information that we'd put into, you know, to to prepare materials for the the science team or you know the damages team, um, or or whatever it was. Um, and I guess the 
the ability to manage that process and then just to, to project manage, hey, we've we just got in a collection of, you know, we still use boxes of, of 200 boxes of stuff, and we've got 50 people to go through this. Let's break this down into chunks that we can manage. I, it's just that was a natural, a natural inclination or skill that I had, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so, I, I started in on the the technology side. So that was that was it. Working for the the plaintiff steering committee on the breast implant litigation, just uh, just a couple of hundred feet from where I'm sitting right now. Very really. Cool. So, yep. so did you ever leave Cincinnati at that point? Like, uh, or was that it? You, you stuck around? No. So, um, when, uh, when that work ended, I didn't, I didn't want to leave the, the firm wanted me to come back and work on the tobacco litigation. And I didn't want to, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd met my wife at that point. Uh, I mean, we weren't, we weren't married yet, but we'd met and I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave. So I wound up, uh, going to work for, uh, one of the companies that did that work on an outsourcing basis. Uh, she was a, was she a Cincinnati native? My wife grew up here, yeah, yeah. Uh, but across the river, like the airport. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, uh, yeah. So I started doing the same thing, essentially there that I was uh, that I've been doing for the firm, and uh, uh, again had a had a natural inclination for it. Um, the the firm was uh, was called Spectrum. Um, got bought by uh, by a company called Blazon, uh, which is one of those companies that in the uh, yep. in the late '90s was on a roll up strategy. So let's just buy market share wherever we can, um, and uh, and then from there, uh, some of the guys left and wanted me to uh, to move to DC. So I, I moved to DC and worked for a, a company there doing the same thing. Cool, cool. And and this is already we're we're went around uh, turn of the turn of the century. Give or take, turn of the century. So the marriage had just taken place. We moved to D.C., uh, moved to about a half mile from the uh, the, the Reagan Airport. So uh, we were we were nice and close in, um, and and did that for a while. Got to got to know that side of the the space. That was one of those tra uh, traditional scan code shops, uh, mm -hmm. more more objective and and still, I didn't deal with it, but there was still some of the paper side going on. Yeah, and, and then. Cincinnati kept calling you home? Uh, after a bit. So from there, I went to work for this tiny little email archiving company called Which iLumen. One? Called what? iLumen. iLumen. Yeah. iLumen, sure. Yeah. So uh, they made a, a product called Accentor, which did uh, email monitoring, mostly for regu uh, fairly large uh, financial institutions. Yep. Right. Regulatory side. So yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, there was a large uh, compliance element, and that was the beginnings of uh, the discovery attaching itself to, to the mail archives. Um, uh, they were had, bought, uh, right? Weren't they, weren't they bought, Illumin was bought by who? I mean, I'm sure you know, like it's been a while. I, I think so, yeah. So yeah. Uh, by Computer Associates. Right. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very so, cool. So uh, Long Island, uh, shortly after we got bought, uh, the company uh, enters into a DPA with the Department of Justice uh, and, and becomes uh, the, the most compliant company uh, imaginable. People were scared to put, you know, their left foot uh, wrong in any, in any way, shape or form. And, you know, that was a good thing. The company had had some troubles before we were on the scene. Um, but uh, uh, there, there was a very strong compliance element. It, it was so strong. Um, so I, I, I was at, at, at CA, I was the uh, discovery product manager, right? So we've got the mail archive and there's different things that sit on top of it, right? You can monitor mail going in and out. You can have a compliance function or you can have the discovery element um, that's able to dive in with certain parameters and get the mail out like we're all used to now. It was just, it was sort of new back then. Yep. Uh, Semantic had uh, discovery accelerator. The EMC guys had, uh, I'm not sure what they called the, uh, 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 the discovery piece that sat on top of mail extender. Um, and then, and then we had, uh, the, the, the message manager and the discovery component that, that sat on top of it. So at one point I, I drew up the marketing folks said, Hey, would you mind, um, you know, just drawing up a, a marketing piece that we can send out to talk about this, this one thing. I don't, I don't remember what it was especially, but, uh, the word e-discovery was mentioned. Okay. And, uh, and, and the, the legal folks came back and said, you can't say e-discovery. Really? 
because it's owned? Was that when, yeah, because that when the uh, the attempt to trademark it was going on? Yeah. Yeah. Got so it. Ibis <laughs> Consulting had, had had trademarked it and it never enforced the mark. Right. Or, or if they had you know, any enforcement had gone completely unnoticed by everybody. So I sent them a list of like, here's all the com- companies that we're up yeah. against using this term. And, and yeah. they said, uh, yeah, but no. <laughs> all right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's just not talk about what it is that we do. Right. We do yes. stuff over here that might look like something you're familiar with, but we won't say yeah. the word. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so well, F discovery. Right, yeah. kind of like e discovery. Yeah, right next we're, we're we're advanced. We're we're beyond yeah. e discovery. Yeah. Yes, exactly. yeah. capital E discovery. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, okay. you can't complain too much because, like, it, it's hard to imagine having too much compliance. Although I guess I just gave a good example of it. Um, you know, all things in moderation, I suppose. Um, but it, it was just it was so funny. It was funny in this ha ha absurd sort of way. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. We can't say the thing everybody's saying. Like you're not going to get far, very far in life, not saying it. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So, so, so basically you're, you're managing this product that, uh, that not be may, or may not, may or may yeah. not form discovery functions for E things, um, right. specifically email. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was interesting because at that time, other than in the financial services, you really didn't have anyone else who was looking at like how do we do things against the archives directly? How do we do things in the corporate environment directly? Like now, that's a given with you know Microsoft, Google, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, where everything is is about the in place story um, and and doing things directly against the repositories. But like back then, was there anyone else using it besides the financial and I guess government probably? But was there anyone else out there who, who's looking at how do we do these things, you know, on mass against the uh, the data? Well, there's no business driver like having the government tell someone you got to buy a product that does what theirs does. Right. Um, and and everybody in the space, everybody in the email archiving space, you know, greatly benefited from. Uh, uh, I, I guess it was the government's clarification that the uh, the storage and monitoring requirements. Of, of basic communications extended to email. So that was that was a nice business driver. Um, but that was like the 2004, 2005 business driver. You know, after that, for the next five years or so, maybe four or five years, the business driver was discovery. Um, and it was the, the cases that were coming out, even, you know, the, even though uh, the Zubalay case was a financial services institution, it was, it was that sort of notice. Um, it was the growing prominence of uh, Sedona uh, and all the things that Richard was doing out in the desert. Um, shortly after that, uh, EDRM came along and sort of, well, here's what you guys have been doing in a picture. Right. Um, so that everybody could understand it. Uh, and it became a bigger and bigger thing. And it, it didn't have the same, this is my sense of it, right? It didn't have the same force of everybody's doing it at once that the government telling you you have to do have. But, um, Sort of company by company or industry by industry, folks would say we've got to we've got to get our arms around this. We have to be doing something here. And then they were looking at at what we did, or or lots of either other people that did what we did, or other ways to skin the the discovery cat and get ahead of the game. Right, and, and it, it's it's fascinating because you know you have you have this fear, the fear of of you know Zubalay came along and it was really that you know. If we don't do this, then not only is the government going to come after us potentially in the regulated industries, but overall, that really kickstarted things in, in, in ways that no one could have imagined, you know, yeah. to, to say this whole concept of sanctions out there for, for not properly preserving is, is massive. And we, while we've seen some of that come to fruition over the last 15 years, it, it's pretty amazing that the fear's always been, and maybe it's because people are doing it right i'm not sure that that's actually true um but, <laughs> but they carry it away now yeah i know that that might be pushing it too far but we haven't truly seen like that that wave of sanctions that everyone was fear fearful of you know where where everyone's going to get sanctioned because because you missed that one email so right it's it's 
interesting how these things play out. And in, in well, America. they changed the rules in 2016, so you basically have to right you know, have John Dillinger in charge of your <laughs> archive processing. Get it well, sanctioned. Come on. Yeah, it's it it definitely. Uh, I don't know if that was made it better or worse in terms of, of the actual what we need to do, but yeah, uh, it, it was just it was it was a bit of the wild west though. It was fun times back then in the 2005 to 2015 era. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it certainly oh. was. Uh, maybe it's not best that fear is the driving factor behind uh, <laughs> a, a lot of the activity. I mean, think about the over-preservation and over-collection we did of hard drives in that time period. Yeah, and right. You know, 15, 20 times what was necessary. Look, this is where people keep their documents. They keep them in on the desktop and in my docs. And other than that, ask where they keep documents. But imaging entire hard drives, uh, yeah, way over, way overbuilt. I mean, nice for the the, uh, the forensic companies, but but uh, <laughs> a, a big drain on on everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So I, when I, did you get that? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Pete. No, go ahead. No, no. I've been going on a bunch. <laughs> That's all right. Dude. That's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> they can hear us talk anytime, right? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So at this point, you're still in D.C., right? You're, yeah. You're, okay. Uh, when did you head back to Cincinnati? Was that when you joined Dinsmore or, or before then? No, no, it was for Dinsmore. Okay. Um, we'd been looking to get back for a bit, and it was, you know, can we, can I still work at CA and do it? And um, I mean, there's, there's not a lot of good stories written about flying in and out of DC. <laughs> um, but uh, I lived close to the airport. I used to play this game. When I would when I would fly in, if I didn't check a bag, uh, which was which was mostly right, if when I made that step from the plane onto the jetway, I would look down at my watch, and my goal was to be inside my front door in 15 minutes. Wow. Okay. And I made it about half the time. So you lived in the uh, Pentagon. Uh, I lived uh, so it was I was actually closer to the airport than to the Pentagon. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. That's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's so we insane. were uh, we were one mile from the runway. Wow. Yeah, kind of like you could have if you Earth. could have walked if you could have walked it, then it would have actually been quicker than going out through uh, through the main doors, kind of thing. Uh, so it was a twenty five minute walk because uh, okay. you had to catch that ramp uh, right by the McDonald's over uh, over Route One. Right, right. but um, but if you could have walked directly from from the runway, that you know just hop off the plane. Yeah. Head, head on home, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty cool. Wow, that's great. That's yeah. great. Okay, so so until this point, you had not been back in the law firm in in what ten years, twelve years, something like uh, that. Do, uh, tw- closer fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, twelve years. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're kind of you're sitting there. You get the offer to to head back to Cincinnati. Was there any what were your thoughts in terms of going back into a law firm and, and not as a lawyer? I mean, you know, you, you were, you were heading back to, to manage technology, which you'd now right. been doing for a while. Was there any, any concerns, any, any fears of heading back into the law firm environment? Um, probably not as many as there should have been. Okay. <laughs> um, there's, I mean, there's certain things that you hear that you just don't internalize in, until you're there. Uh, like, well, uh, we have a way we like to do things. Let's just do it that way. Um, I mean, the, the but you have the full autonomy. Way. You have full autonomy to do whatever you want, but we like to do it this way, right? Right, 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 right. right, right. Were you the first e-discovery director? Were you brought in for that, or more for lit support, or both? I mean, what was your charter when you came on board? So, is uh, to take the lit support group and and e-discovery. Um, together. My, my title at the time had both of them uh, in there. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and really it was just, we know we're supposed to be doing the right things. We know what they are. We mostly do them, but let's just systematize. Mm-hmm. So, right. I mean, there were, there were lots of good ways of doing a thing instead of, well, let's just pick one and just do it that way. And yeah. I don't really care, you know, if, if they're all good ways, let's, I don't care which one we pick, but let's just pick one and just do it that right. way. Standardize it on in some way, shape or form. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, and, and um, in, in terms of that experience of you're a lawyer, 
you're talking to lawyers, you're talking to, to people who, you know, you can relate to them. Um, did they have someone, did they have an attorney actually running the department before you were there or, or, or the individual, you know, with support teams, like were there attorneys on there or were you the first attorney to, to come join that team? No, there had been a, a, an attorney that had run it before. Okay. And, and was like, did that, do you find that, because I'm trying to, to think through, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, they, they kind of think through their career as like, I have to either I'm in this role or I'm in this role and trying to mix and then go back to you know, switch back and forth. A lot of people are fearful of that, you know, like they leave the law firm, they go to a vendor, they go to, to a partner, they go to an advisory company, whatever it is. And either if it doesn't work out or they get bored or whatever, and they're a lot of times fearful of going back to a law firm, and especially if they're going back to a law firm in a different type of role than when they left. Um, right. And, you know, you've done it very successfully. So just trying to, to understand kind of what the thoughts were at that time when you were doing it. So, so um, I, I guess I didn't have any real fears of it. Um, I, again, though, I probably should have had some fears of it. Uh, essentially, the lawyers at, at Dinsmore are uh, functionally no different than the lawyers at other places. Um, I mean, every lawyer I've ever met is the smartest person in any given room. Um, it's just that firms are now bigger than they used to be. So instead of you know 50 people all being the smartest in the room, you have you know six or 700 that are all the smartest person in the room. Right. Again, no difference here than anywhere. Um, and trying to, to work with someone and sell them the value of using a process that other people use, and maybe you haven't used, but here's why there's benefits to it. Look to other success stories. Let us do something for you that's small and, and, and then grow from there. That's, that's the same as, as everybody that's got my chair in firms across the country and you know everybody that's trying to do any sort of process improvement on whatever's been working to some degree or other for somebody for a while. Valid point. Valid point. So, how's the uh, how's the acceptance of a technology savvy lawyer? I mean, did you have any not specific resistance, but was that was that tough or no? I mean, you know, we hear horror stories about even from judges. Well, these people come in, they don't really know what they're talking about with the technology. Yada yada yada. Doesn't sound like that was as much a factor for you. Um. So. It wasn't, um, and that's it's not because you know I'm super this or super that or or you know anything like that. It's really more you know this what what we do sort of fits into this this little box, and we get brought out when um, the person whose case it is says this is advantageous to bring these guys out now, and uh, if it doesn't seem advantageous, um, then then we hey, don't get brought out. They leave you in the dungeon. And, and, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's a nice 21st floor dungeon, but yeah. yeah. So, how many, that, 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 we didn't ask, how many people in the department? You know? How, so how, it's, uh, right now it's just five. Cool, for the entire firm. Yeah. And that, that's pretty cool. And you're able to get everything done. I'm, I'm sure quite busy. <laughs> so Yeah, so we are. We, we, we used to have more. Our, it was easier to track under one of our older platforms. Um, for the first several years, our data grew 50% year over year. Um, and it's, it's gotten a little harder to measure. And we, uh, just cause the intake is the spot where we'd measure it. We doing snapshots at any one point in time would be challenging. And, uh, we, we were doing sizing on a couple of projects last week and it took more than a week to do them. So wow. that's the, the measuring of straight data volumes has sort of fallen off a bit. We can do counts, but it's not the same. Um, but the volumes were growing 50% year over year while we were, uh, shrinking in staff. Right. Uh, and, and again, we put that down to standardization of process and increased efficiencies. Yeah. We're yeah. constantly looking to, to wring the washcloth and see if we can get some more, some more water out of it. Right. It's a little, a little faster, a little smarter. Um, how's cloud adoption been at, at the firm and within the, the team? What, what's your thoughts on where things are today? So cloud adoption has been terrific. People are adopting cloud all the time, uh, all kinds of clouds. Um, uh, every cloud that comes along, somebody here wants to adopt <laughs> wants it. To be in it, right? <laughs> um, fortunately, I'm not the uh, the IT security crowd that has to say, "Whoa, not that one." No, not right. that one. 
Okay. Um, and, you know, somebody moves into a role and, and says, well, wait a minute, let's go look at this agreement. It says here they can keep our data anywhere. And so we called them and found out that they're keeping it in the UK. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yes. maybe they shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, that was one of the, the cloud uh, storage sites that, uh, that somebody was using. So, um, and, and again, that's not, there's nothing, there's nothing new or unusual here, right? Uh, you know, shadow IT has been going on everywhere. Um, and, and fortunately for the past several years, this group that's been, let's, let, again, standardized, right? Let's, let's bring this under control. Let's, let's do a deep dive on two and, and use two instead of using, you know, seven. Let's Eight, get rid of right, it, exactly. Yeah. yeah. How about interfacing with clients? Who may or may not be in the cloud, and 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 you know data and, and security concerns there. Is that becoming more problematic? Clients assuming more uh, at their end. So assuming that that uh, like they're putting things in more places, or yes, yeah. Again, I I cannot imagine we're in the uh, we're an outlier there. I, I imagine we're we're full on you know in, in line with what everybody else is experiencing. Oh yeah, uh, which is. Yeah. God only knows where it's coming from tomorrow. Um, yeah. as, I, I don't I want to imagine, know the edge of that. I imagine there's going to be a bit of lag between today, a Wednesday, that we're having this conversation. And you know it's Wednesday because I'm wearing pink. You know, on Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday we wear pink. pink. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, your number one what? job in life is to uh, embarrass your daughters. <laughs> and uh, me quoting Mean Girls is uh, it, about as embarrassing. Way to go. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. What about clients so taking on more e-discovery work? Is any of that going oh, yeah. on? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold on. I was gonna, I was gonna finish here. So, um, oh no, you, your time was up on that there. section. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we, we diverted into Mean Girls. And that's on, let me, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get my. How do I mute? How do I mute the host? Right. <laughs> Once you use a movie <laughs> reference, that's an automatic segue to something else. <laughs> Come on, it was Mean Girls. I get like another thirty <laughs> seconds with that. So. Um, it's, it's a Wednesday, and I imagine it's going to be a couple of days before this is made widely available. And in that time, uh, you know, some guys are going to, you know, they're working in a garage in Palo Alto right now, and they're going to release a new tool. Um, that and, teleports and then, you know, your data. Our clients are going to, yeah. Right? It's our, the new yeah. <laughs> our clients are going to start uh, start using it, and then we'll, we'll have to figure out what that is. Yeah, exactly. It's so, the, you, you didn't hear they're opening the new data center on Mars, and, uh, you know, they're just right. going to... Beam all the data out there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so That's dust. I'm sure that'll be better. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. No problems there. No, no problems there. So well, if you're looking to cool down a large data center, it seems like moving it to Mars would be a good step. Exactly. Yeah. Just wait. Just wait. So yeah. it's um, only a little latency problem. It won't be severe. We'll be able to deal with it. We got that. We got that handled. <laughs> a big pipe that goes yeah. from here to there. Right. We're going to install <laughs> a big pipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what, what have you seen in terms of uh, over the last few years? What's been the biggest challenge uh, working within a law firm in terms of a manager? Aside from talking to us in this interview. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, right. So, um, I imagine it's the fact that uh, I'm actually on a telephone call with the client right now. And half of the answers you think I'm giving to you, I'm actually giving to you. <laughs> right. You've got to phrase them exactly else. right. So that <laughs> works both ways. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's the true challenge of it. So um, the the challenges are, you know, again, we're right in the middle of what everybody else is experiencing: data volumes, uh, uh, data velocity, um, uh, the the new kinds. Right, we we get a handle on on how to preserve. Um, you know, emails a a big honking hard thing, and then you know everybody on the planet and the ones on Mars are adopting. Uh, 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 364 or yeah. 365.25 or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, I shouldn't do that. I realize, you know, I watch these, you know, religiously, uh, which means on my knees, every time you guys release one, and I'm like, that was a stupid joke that guy told. That was, I should talk to <laughs> now it's, that other people are now it's, stupid. Yeah, now it's Ventura or, or Camentura, or it's not even, there's no number anymore now with the new release, right? Uh, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Rocky's going, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm out of Microsoft. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gone. I'm gone. They don't call so me we, anymore. We yep. get a handle on that, right? And now we, you know, now it's like, well, what's the best way to preserve, you know, something like Slack, right? One of the cloud tools. Right. Right. Yeah. 
or, or, or to gather elements from teams or, you know, just to, to capture stuff from uh, signal or something like that. But luckily you know, the always... standard in the rules now is all you got to do is say, we tried, right? You don't have to like do it. You just have to say, <sighs> we tried. <laughs> Peter's got this shocked look on his face. Mr. O'Connor. I can't believe I would, he said I that. I there would be no editorializing. <laughs> exactly. No editorializing. It's just a, a pure comment. Uh-huh. We, we, we disavow any comments from Mr. O'Connor and uh, yeah. Um, but how how so, hard so is I, that I, though? All, yeah. all, all, all seriousness aside, yeah. uh, how hard is it keeping up like that? With, with, you know, how hard is it to give it the, the best effort with the constant changes? We joke about it, yeah. but, but that's really true, right? Especially with the diversity of, of software now. Like you said, there's so yeah. many different data types. Well, how hard is that for you to keep on top of, really? Oh, it's seriously hard, right? We, we, so we've got, you know, people that have specific tasks on the team of, you need to stay on top of this. You mm -hmm. need to stay on top of that. Or, right. you know, you're constantly calling a buddy at a, at a different, uh, that's got your chair at a different firm saying, so you, how you been? How's the wife? Right. How's, you know, what about this team stuff, right? Well, that's a real <laughs> yeah. challenge. How are we going to do this? Right. Yeah. So, it's, you know, that's why it's great that organizations like ILTA exist where you can, you know, come together and, and lean on each other and, um, you know, user groups through your various tools and, and you know, pick up the phone and call someone or there's a, a monthly call that you can get on and say, hey, you know, here's the challenge we've been seen having. And, yep. You know, yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. one of the good things about this industry, right, is the, the uh, uh, above the water, right? The the iceberg, the part of the iceberg you see is fierce and competitive, and they're trying to get clients from each other and trying to win cases, or you know, trying to get the better out of somebody in a in an acquisition or a better price or a worse price or whatever. But the behind the or the under the water, I gotta stick with yeah, my metaphor. Keep your metaphors the right. The, yeah. The, the under the water part is there's a lot of work together, and yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's a great point. That's a great yeah. point. Yeah. I mean, you look at at you know, I know you've been very active in Sedona and other organizations. I mean, you know, you've got people from both sides of the bar and, and you've got people who, yeah, if, if they're in court together, we'll, we'll slaughter each other. But when it comes down to it, everyone's trying to just better the industry, which is a really nice thing. You that know? wasn't yeah. going to be any editorial, I think. Hey, I'm allowed to express my opinions. <laughs> that was, at least that was not once editorializing. <laughs> that was kumbaya. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. That was, and that was fact. That was fact. Yeah. So okay, but you raise a good point, Rocky, and you just touched upon it, uh, Pete. You know, when the cooperation proclamation was was first released, there was a lot of pushback from lawyers. There wasn't a lot of that under the water iceberg stuff. Um, I mean, you've really seen it improve that much. Um, well, the point I was making. So what you're describing is the visible part of the iceberg. Yeah. And I was talking about the under the water. But I didn't think I don't think there was that much under the water in 2006, 2007. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe there was even so that. I, I, I think the technical folks that had to worry about how we're going to exchange information were always working but behind right. the scenes, right? Um, on a on a, on a friendly basis, or somebody else, you know, that's you know maybe co-counsel, but you're going to be going after the same client next week, right? right. There's always a. a Let's just get this part done, and and you know let the gladiators do their their battle sort of sort of thing. Um, cooperation as uh, unto itself is always it, it, it's a tricky it's a tricky challenge, right? I mean, because really discovery is not the battle. I mean, discovery sort of become the battle is you know we don't have trials anymore, um, but discovery is just about exactly. like here's here's what we're gonna do, and you know we're gonna we're gonna wear these shoulder pads and these helmets and. Agreeing on the rule set isn't really all that, all that different. Um, but the, so Tom the Brady you know, starts bringing his own footballs with him, then it, <laughs> then it changes. You know. Right, right. That's a that's a that's a good metaphor for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think the cooperation proclamation has done a really good job. I don't know that you see a lot of overt. Okay, you know we're gonna we're gonna gather in, you know, at the beginning up. of the hearing, right? right. Light the candle. And everybody, you know, channeled your inner Stevie Nicks, not the cocaine part, right? But the, right. Yeah, uh, the yeah. witchy part. Just the, you know, the, the twirling yeah. around with the big yeah. skirt part. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's there's not a lot of that, right? But but I there's I think there's a lot of, and there always has been a lot of. Look, can I work with this guy? Um, can we can we work together to get this part done efficiently? 
and, and quite honestly, the biggest driver in a lot of those instances is the client saying, I want you to fight about, you know, whether we did this thing or did not do that thing or, you know, whatever the merits of the matter are. Don't waste um, money. Yeah. Oh, Bro- you know, Browning made do. that comment to me once. I asked him how if he missed being in the courtroom um, as he became more of a senior guy and, the, you know, the lawyers, guns and money traveling all over the world <laughs> for the for the for the firm. And um, he said, you know, uh, yeah, I missed that part. I missed the camaraderie. I missed the, you know, the. The, the litigators, the guys sitting around in the morning having coffee and talking about what we're going to do. Um, he said, but some of the clients now, he said, you know, that they, they want the scorched earth policy. They don't want to just win. They want me to, you know, go to my my opponent's house and burn it down and spread salt on the earth. And, you know, he said, there's a lot more animosity generating, not everywhere, um, but he said it, it, it's become much more confrontational. Um and maybe that had something to do with the amount of cases declining too. The, the ones that actually got to that stage were really bitter. Um, so I, I, I don't know, but he he made that same comment, Peter. He, he really thought there was a an interesting change in tone that wasn't always necessarily coming from the attorneys. Huh. All right. So unfortunately, we're we're nearing the end of our time. Um, I know it it flies fast. Um, but I, I wanted to uh, run through a couple quick questions, uh, get get your thoughts on a couple things uh, before okay. we before we wrap it up with Tom. Um, so first of all, uh, in general, movie or book, what's your preference? Oh, uh, um, I, I I'm, I'm totally opposed to or. I'm much more about and. Um, but okay. I will. I my preference is book and then movie. Book then movie, yeah. solid. Yeah. Solid. I, I don't want to pick one or the other. Yeah. Okay. Except for <laughs> adaptations of Stephen King books, which are just <laughs> well, it depends. No, some have been good. There have no, been some two books, have but... been good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Shawshank. So somebody's gonna somebody's gonna take the position that some of Stephen King's books are not good. No, the books but are great. The, the book, adaptations. Adaptations. Uh, oh, the okay. movie adaptations yeah. have been horrible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some of them. Uh-huh. What were the What were the good ones? Huh? Shawshank your, Redemption. Shawshank. Great, great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was that a book or just a short story? It was a short story. So, okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, in terms of his like full book, full books, there haven't been a whole lot of, of solid adaptations. Uh, I liked, uh, I liked the second Carrie version was... of it. I thought the new version of it was good. Was well I, I can't watch it because when I read it at like 11 years old, <laughs> it terrified me of clowns, and I refused to watch it. My daughter tried to get me to watch it. And nope, not nope. happening. So, okay, favorite movie to quote? Not your favorite movie, but what's your favorite movie to quote? Oh man. So um, there's there's a few that are just up there. Um, so obviously, uh, Caddyshack, um, <laughs> Coming to America, Fletch. Uh, those those have to be a, a, a few of the a few of the top movies. Solid, solid. Um, just just one or two good quotes from Mean Girls, I suppose. Uh, but that we know why you're doing it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. be the ball, Danny. Be the ball. Um, work from home or the office? Office. Office. Interesting. Uh, because of productivity or camaraderie, which, which piece of it? So part of it is I, I got to show my face. Um. Okay. Hey, let's have a call is yeah, soon when I get time, right? Um, but just just being physically present. I, mm-hmm. My answer might be different if I live further out, um, but I've got uh, I've got a relatively short commute. Uh, you might call it 12 minutes. If there's an accident along the way, 13 minutes. Um, and you get this living close I'm... to the office thing down, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, <laughs> that's one of the things that we always focus on. Uh, once or twice a spring, I'll walk home, and it's about an hour and a half walk. Wow. Nice. nice, nice. Okay. Um, what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Oh, um, well, I had anchovies on a pizza once, and I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was I was in France, and I didn't know what I was ordering. <laughs> um, what's the French word for anchovy? 
<laughs> he doesn't know, which is how he ended up. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I knew the answer to that. <laughs> that was, uh, it was otherwise a great meal. And once I figured out what that was, I peeled them off and it was, it was great. It was in uh, yeah. Rouen, yeah. in, uh, on our way to Normandy. Um, weirdest thing I've ever eaten. I don't know. And nothing really stands out. I mean, okay. That, that's fair. Uh, one you, uh, you grew up in southern Louisiana. That's true. Yeah, you know, eat anything. <laughs> what would other that's people right. think? We don't call uh, it roadkill. We call it barbecue. Come on. Right. Um, okay. I was just I, saying to somebody the other day, um, the worst part about eating squirrel stew is having to spit out the the buckshot <laughs> as, you, as you encounter the little the little pellets. <laughs> but as far as eating anything weird, no, I don't. I don't yeah, really come in. <laughs> um, last one for me is uh, in one, one sentence, a one sentence piece of advice that you'd give to your younger self. Oh. In early 2011, make sure you buy much bitcoin as you can <laughs> but sell it um yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Hold, hold on to it yeah. until october of 2021 right exactly. um, so I, I don't i don't think that really counts in the uh, spirit that you uh, that you have uh, no question. but it's valid it's all right it's all right yeah yeah we're good I, I think it's something along the lines of just just always keep learning right just just make sure you're always always turning over the 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 new leaf um figuring out what's next, uh, digging under the hood. How does this work? Make sure to understand, you know, how it goes from what's on, you know, the front end to what's on the, the back end. Cool. Well, Mr. O'Connor, I will turn. I over have one rapid fire question, which is the source of much contention between Rocky right. and I. <laughs> you may be on Beatles. different sides of this one. <laughs> Beatles or Stones? Beatles. Cha-ching! All right. This interview is over. We're done. That's all I got I, to say. I mean, both both fine. No, 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 no. Absolutely. No, no, no. I don't yeah. want to hear it. 55 I don't want to hear it. No. Nah, 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 no. Nah, nah. <laughs> really, the answer to that question is Professor Longhair. Yeah, there you go. Now you're talking. Dr. If you John. go to New Orleans, yep. you're going to see that Mardi Gras. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, on a more serious note, if you could spend one day with anybody from our profession, living or dead, uh, who would it be and what would you do? That sort of depends on how you define our profession. If it's, D if it's e-discovery, then it's probably, it's probably Richard if it's e-discovery. Okay. Um, if it's the law writ large, um, yeah. then it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a toss up between, uh, um, Justice Brennan, um, uh, and going back to that, uh, that town in, uh, in X where we had dinner that one night or, uh, or Louis Brandeis. Louis Brandeis, yeah. What, what, what would you do? Yeah, what would you do? Just dinner? So with Justice Brennan? Uh, well, so we'd, all three. Anyway, of, all three. All three. Of, yeah. yeah. Or so bring with, all three with, together. <laughs> right. Yeah. With, with Richard, we just would sit around. We'd, we'd, we'd sit outside the, the cocktail reception. I'd have my gin. He'd roll his cigarette. And we'd chat about whatever the book was that we'd, we'd each just finished. There you um, go. And, and that would re, that would recount a number of uh, a number of scenes that we had together, which were uh, were always terrific. Um, with Brennan, it would be uh, to recount this one dinner in the summer of '88. Um, his wife was there. There was a group of uh, my law school classmates were there, um, and just to hear his perspective on, I'm not trying to do a thing, right? It's just you have to recognize, and I'll remember this sentence till some minute after I'm dead, I suppose. Um, the the basic human dignity of every life that's involved in the cases that come before us, mm. um, and uh, with with Lou and with Louis Brandeis, I'd I'd want to I it would be more of a question and answer, right? How do you reach your hands out and and just reach down into the dirt and just and just come up with a thing? How do you create this this brand new notion of something that's this has always been there, but you haven't really seen it? Right. Um, but here, let me explain it to you in a way that's going to endure for a century or more. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Great. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Peter, See, thank I, you. I, I was worried oh. that he was going to say when he said it depends how you define 
I was worried that he was going to say, it depends how you define living and dead. And then we were going to go somewhere. Oh, totally. actually, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, a other. So, <laughs> that's a metaphysical conversation that everybody in New Orleans is perfectly uh, free to have. Well, yes. Um, I, I commend to you the writings of Andre Kudrescu, the Romanian yes. poet, who posited yes. that everybody lives in New Orleans, either when you're alive or when you're dead. That's right. <laughs> It's valid. Tom, or, I will tell I you that uh, Sunday I made red beans and they were as good as Popeye's. Oh, all right. I'm going to have to take your <laughs> word for that. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to test that theory next time you're in town. Yeah, you, yeah. My pot will be at your disposal. Right. My, uh, I have some my in crop. my pot. Well, it's actually my pot. fridge. My, my cooking pot. Yes, yes of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's Louisiana. Uh, anyway, awesome. <laughs> Peter, thanks so much for your time. Always a pleasure. Um, I really enjoy talking to you. Looking forward to, uh, I'm planning to be at ILTA this year and uh, ho hopefully we'll get to see you in person and um, uh, enjoy some more great stories like this. Yep. Hopefully everybody yeah. comes out to, uh, to ILTA, uh, to uh, Georgetown in the fall. Um, yes, is, are, is there a date on that? Is, are we set on that? Or are you set on that? Yeah, so um, the it's the uh, the back into its usual spot the Thursday Friday before Thanksgiving. Right. Um, and the, the, and the planning committee co chairs have put together an excellent program. Um, uh, Corey Lee and David Kessler uh, have just done a tremendous job. Oh, good, 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 good. Awesome. Um, same hotel, or we'll be back like to the Renaissance or one of those. Renaissance. Renaissance. There you go. All right. Oh. I'm um, looking, looking forward. forward to it. Always, always a highlight as well. Everybody come out. Oh, and uh, we haven't announced it yet, but this is the case every year. So I'm assuming it's the case. Use my last name as a code to get $100 off the registration fee. All right. <laughs> Excellent. So we'll, we'll make sure that uh, that gets mentioned um, yep. in the Excellent. in the marketing for this uh, unbelievably riveting, rich experience yes. that we just <laughs> had. Yes. <laughs> No, awesome. And, really, I'm sorry. Thanks. I'm sorry. One last question. Uh, uh, pick for Tigers finish this year? Nine and three. Nine and three. All right. Very good. Third in the West. Okay. okay. We'll see. All right. Peter, thanks again so much. Truly appreciate it. Rocky, uh, yep. great pleasure as always. Enjoy uh, uh, not only Charm City, which, as you know, is my second favorite city in the entire world. Yep. Uh, but also the what 25th anniversary showing of um, of the fifth element. Yep, that's the, my activity. Did I get that right? 25th? 25th. So oh, okay. Yeah. Well have, have fun. Thank you. <laughs> Good and, to see uh, you. Thanks. <laughs> that's right. And uh, we hope to see all the rest of you again next time on the eDiscovery channel. Thanks yep. so much.